Hi, welcome you to today's lesson in science on the topic farming system. So we've been doing a lot of about farming systems. We looked at shifting cultivation, advantages and disadvantages. And we've looked at all the farming systems we'll be taking critical look at. So today, our objective for this lesson is to know some of the various farming systems that exist. And we started last week and we saw shifting cultivation. So we are going to continue with land rotation. So what is land rotation? So land rotation, this is a farming system in which a farmer cultivates a piece of land for some time and leaves it to cultivate a new one when the old one has lost its fertility. So land rotation is just as similar to shifting cultivation except that in land rotation the person does not move his or her settlement where the person stays remains constant okay but then the person changes the land for cultivation so once land a if we have two lands and b and this is where the person lives okay once the person is done cultivating here and this land has lost its nutrient the person will move towards land b but in land rotation the person does not move his or her settlement so that's the difference between land rotation and shifting cultivation so the farmer waits for the old farm to regain its fertility let's look at some advantages of land rotation so the advantages of land rotation is quite similar to that of shifting cultivation where the land becomes fertile again during the fallow period simple farm implements like hoes and catalysts are used pests and diseases are controlled it's just similar to shifting cultivation and disadvantages of land rotation include the land not being fully utilized regular clearing and burning of vegetation which encourages soil erosion the system destroys virgin forests food that are produced is small and the system cannot be practiced in areas where the land is scarce so because it has to do with movement from land a to land b realize that if you don't have a lot of land you can't use the, this type of farming system land rotation so the land is usually not fully utilized once the, the farmer sees that the land the nutrient stores in the land is being used then the farmer just moves to land b because they do not want all the nutrients to be completely used okay now let's go to crop rotation crop rotation this is a system of farming in which different type of crops are grown in different plots on the farm in definite sequence or cycle so the important terms to notice that different crops are grown on in different plots on the farm in a definite sequence or cycle and we'll get to see all the sequence or cycle so before we get into that let's look at some principles of crop rotation so in crop rotation there are some basic principles that needs to be adopted for example deep rooted crops should be followed by shallow rooted crops this is because when you plant deep rooted crops usually they drain or they take away all the nutrients in the soil so then planting another deep rooted crop is likely not to grow very well so you need to follow up with a shallow rooted crop which will not take so much nutrient from deep down the soil that is why deep rooted crops should always be followed with shallow rooted crops for example a shallow rooted crop like tomato should always follow a deep rooted crop like cassava because cassava is a root tuber and it goes deep down so 
you know that after planting a lot of cassava the nutrients in the soil is going to be depleted and so you you need to plant crops with shallow roots like tomato another principle to consider in crop rotation is that crops that are closely related or belong to the same family should not follow each other for example after growing cassava you shouldn't be expecting to grow yam because yam and cassava are all in the same family all deep rooted crops so crops that are related in or belong to the same family should not follow each other another another good example is may should not follow millet or sorghum in the cycle since they are all cereals granite should not follow cowpea or beans since they are all legumes this is to avoid the same nutrients being absorbed from the soil another principle to look at is leguminous crops like cowpea and granite should be included in the rotation plan so this is to add nutrients to the soil to control erosion to improve soil structure and to control weed growth so that is why you need to add the leguminous crops during or in crop rotation because they add nutrients to the soil they control erosion and they improve soil structure as well as control weed growth next follow period should be allowed during the time of rotation now you might as well know why you need to leave or allow the land to go through a period of fallow this is for the land to regain all the nutrients it has lost so after putting the land through pressure you have to make sure the land regains all its nutrients and that is done during the fallow period and lastly crops which are not closely related but are likely to be affected by the same disease should not follow each other so if you know that tomato like tomato crop would be affected by a certain disease or was affected by a certain disease and you know that the next crop that will follow is also likely to be affected by the same disease then it's not advisable to use those crops or those crops should not follow each other because then the disease would then be transmitted to the other one So let's look at an example of a rotational plan. So in this figure you can see a four year rotational plan and a three year rotational plan. So in the first year you can see the first, second, third and fourth. You can see the four different plots of land. So plot one, plot two, plot three and plot four. So with plot one, in the first year yam was grown, plot two the first year cowpea was gone plot three tomato and plot four maize in the second year you can see there is a rotation now cowpea starts cowpea starts so cowpea starts followed by tomato followed by maize and then yam in the third year there is another rotation so the tomato now starts then the maize then the yam then the cowpea then fourth year maize yam cowpea tomato so this is why the name is crop rotation because the crops take turn and depending on the year and which crop is planted so below the first figure is the three-year plan where you can see yam, cowpea and millets also being rotated in plot 1, plot 2 and plot 3 in the first, second and third year. So let's look at some advantage of crop rotation. So crop rotation has some benefits and some of the benefits is that soil erosion is controlled. Now because every single time there is probably a crop being planted and even during the fallow period shallow rooted crops are planted you realize that the soil soil erosion problem is controlled 
there is effective use of land. So with crop rotation, the land available or land space is actually used. Also, soil fertility is maintained. So during the fallow period, certain plants are planted, for example, the leguminous plants, and they supply the soil with nutrients. So soil fertility is maintained. Weeds are easily controlled. Cycles of diseases and insects and pests are easily disrupted because of crop rotation of because of the rotation of crops. It ensures effective use of labor and different crops can be produced on a piece of land for a longer time. So these are the advantages of crop rotation. Let's look at some of the disadvantages. So crop rotation has a few disadvantages. And one of them is some farmers cannot practice this type of farming system because special skills are required for planning. So crop rotation has to do with a lot of planning. You can't just start rotating crops if you don't know which one should come first, which one should come second. And if you do not have a lot of land space to, it's very difficult to practice crop rotation. Lastly, one disadvantage of crop rotation. Lastly, the one disadvantage of crop rotation is that it becomes difficult to carry out cultural practices since different crops are involved. So because different crops are involved, you can't use one cultural practice for all of them. So you need to know the type of crops and the cultural practice involved. And so those are the disadvantages we will end here i've given some questions for you to answer and i hope this video will guide you to be able to answer them until we meet again have a nice day bye bye